The final experiment is now deeply entrenched in the law of flat earth versus the globe. A tremendous example of people who disagree coming together and trying to find out the truth. And today I wanted to review a video from someone who calls themselves Flat Earth Reconnaissance, who published their video before the guys even went on their trip to Antarctica. Let's all see just how wrong he was, shall we? Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. So the final experiment is long behind us now. And actually Will Duffy, the organiser, is preparing for the final debate on the topic, where he's putting himself out there to debate any flat earther on the subject of the final experiment. I believe that's happening on August the 23rd. Link for his channel is in the description. You can check that out and look forward to that with bated breath. But what did the channel Flat Earth Reconnaissance have to say on the matter? Let's find out. So long. Okay, now about that uh, final experiment. Well, when you think about it, it cannot just be about a bunch of people traveling down south in Antarctica in order to observe the sky to see if there is a 24-hour sun. Doesn't make sense. Well, that's exactly what it was. And they did, proving the AE map flat earth model wrong in the process. Not a great start here. And these are the reasons, you know, that brought me to uh, come to that first conclusion. Okay, first, if the earth was a globe, and if there was a South Pole, so of course, there should have been already many observations of a 24 hour sun in Antarctica for years, for decades now. But so far, Nothing. That is a downright lie. Multiple time-lapse videos show it. Stations like Amazon Scott, Concordia, and even tourists at the edge of the Antarctic Circle have recorded continuous sunlight in the Southern Hemisphere's continuous summer. That's late November to January, where the South Pole does experience 24 hours of daylight. If you haven't seen it, that's not because it doesn't exist. It's because you haven't looked. Or more like, you refuse to look because it would ruin the flat earth narrative. And actually, now that they have gone, you can see the full 24 hour time lapse from Dave McKeegan whenever you want. And even more, we have fake videos of a 24 hour sun in Antarctica. So why make fake videos? You understand? So that's the first point. Your belief that a video is fake does not make it fake. You do know that, right? And actually, even if there was a fake video, which there's not, that does not mean there's no 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Okay, now two. Uh, we know that it's not easy to go to Antarctica. First of all, you have to have special authorizations. You have to go through a very heavy, you know, bureaucratic procedure. You have very expensive fees in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And many times people that paid those fees, you know, have been refused access to Antarctica. So uh, it's not that easy. And sending like a, a 25 to 30 people team in Antarctica, uh, you're talking about millions of dollars. As far as I can tell, there were eight or nine of them that made the trip. And Will only financed himself and a few others at around $20,000 each. That's not millions. And also, it should be difficult to get there. Antarctica is no joke. It needs to be shown that you're capable of making the trip and have all of the necessary safety procedures in place. Your point there is easily debunked by the fact that Antarctica has around 100,000 tourists every year. Either somebody is paying for this, you know, and to my mind, it cannot be like a small church pastor like Will Duffy using his private money to do so. You have no clue about Will's financial position. You can't just postulate that he can't afford it. So it can only be like an organization behind paying this. Or these fees are being waived and the bureaucratic procedure is being like, you know, flattened. <laughs> so uh, again, the same question, you know, comes back. Who is behind all this? Who has the power, you know, to facilitate? such an expedition, or to finance it. You understand? Well, Antarctic Logistics and Expeditions were the tour operator they used. And as I said, Will Duffy financed himself and some others, whilst the rest of them financed themselves. Okay, now just to reinforce these two points, the third point is this. For decades now, we are being told that there are like scientists, you know, working in Antarctica. So how come nobody thought about like having one of these guys filming a 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Why wait so long? 
you know, to have any videos of that 24 hour sun. And why spend, you know, so much money, you know, into such an expedition when we can have a guy like, you know, willing to do so for like maybe like 10 grand. <laughs> you understand? So this also doesn't make sense. Okay, that's the third point. Um, they have multiple times. You can watch these videos right now. I mean, not in this video, obviously. You're too busy not doing research. But anyone else can find them in about 10 seconds. Here's one from Anthony Powell filmed in 2015. Okay, now four. A, why wait until the end of the year 2024 to make that final experiment? Do you think it's a coincidence that uh, that final experiment is being planned at the exact same time when China and the European Union are ready to launch their artificial suns in the air? Um, I don't know if you know how this works, but the 24-hour sun in Antarctica is only visible during its summer, which is the end of the year. There's no point going when it's dark for 24 hours, is there? And I think you've misinterpreted what artificial sun means in this context. It refers to nuclear fusion reactors, not actual flying suns. Dear, oh dear. Okay, now about these artificial suns. Do you really believe that the official reason we are being given by these nations for manufacturing artificial suns. Do make sense? Do you really believe they've been rushing and spending so much money into these projects just to find a new source of clean energy? In short, yes. Because if you solve the nuclear fusion problem, you become very rich very quickly. And then again, do you think it makes sense that these nations are manufacturing artificial suns five times harder? than the sun, while warning the entire world against like global warming? Again, I think you misunderstand what it actually is, my friend. These energy sources will reduce global warming. Okay, now that we've just seen that something is fishy around, you know, the manufacturing of all these artificial suns by these countries and around that final experiment, let's analyze now uh, the flat earthers, you know, participating uh, to that experiment. Let's see what's fishy about them. Listen again. Anybody telling you that the 24-hour sun in Antarctica doesn't matter is a liar. Why? Because it's impossible on our model. That was Jaren there who ended up going on the trip. And he is right. It's impossible on the most well-believed flat Earth model. Okay, now the first thing is this. Something that has already been proven cannot be unproven, cannot be debunked. The Earth has been proved many times as being flat. No, it hasn't. The Earth has been proved as not being a globe. No, it hasn't. So we know that there is no South Pole. We have already proofs of that. We know there is, actually. Now, for a flat Earther that understands this, that knows these proofs, and even more, that did contribute to establish these facts. Going to Antarctica to see if there is a 24-hour sun in the South Pole uh, is some kind of a rejection of everything is been officially believing in so far and a rejection of everything he has done so far. That was kind of the point. He knows the 24-hour sun was impossible on the model he believed in. To witness the 24-hour sun destroyed anything he'd done before that, which is why he flipped, of course. It is actually like a treason, like telling you, you know what, the flat earth, you know, is just now uh, coming back to a level of a theory. It's not something that has been established, you understand? So this is the first thing what's fishy in that attitude. That means that this flat earthers were in fact fake flat earthers. Uh, some kind of disinformation agents 
being infiltrated into our movement to uh, spread doubt about, you know, the whole flat earth theory. Having known Jeren for around eight years now and how he makes his videos, as well as speaking to him since the final experiment, I totally disagree with that. He was serious. He believed it 100%. The flat earth model is, has no mechanism. There's no way to explain it. None whatsoever. Now, you, you might say, well, it doesn't change, Jaron, the fact that the ground is measured flat. Yeah, I get that. But also, if there's something that is impossible, that you're just going to say, well, I still believe what I believe, even though it has an impossibility, I have a problem with that. So now what's even more fishy about these flat earthers is uh, that in the same time, you can see how they are attempting to divide and implode the flat earth movement by first of all attacking its veterans uh the very pillars of the flat earth movement that's like saying the soggy cardboard box you can stand on do you understand that that person is trying to protect something now maybe he's trying to cover his ass let's say we go down there and we see the 24-hour sun guess who is immediately on my list as the prime suspect shill cia agent eric dubay it's the who brought us the map so of course he's backtracking now it's the map that he gave everybody where did i first see the ae map atlantean conspiracy said it from day one okay where did everyone else feel like they got their flat earth information from eric dubay this is true he's been on damage limitation ever since the final experiment our friend finally decides to tell us what he thinks the final experiment will be okay now since that final experiment seems to have brought back flat earth to a level of a theory let me just now expose you a, another a theory a the final experiment theory as a cia black op whose objective is to implode and destroy the flat earth movement by infiltrating disinformation agents at its very uh, highest levels and its lowest levels and all the way through staging a fake 24-hour sun being seen in Antarctica and being endorsed by this so-called true and you know credible flat earthers and uh, in order to uh, discredit the flat earth theory by having this you know non flat earthers you know admitting publicly that they were wrong and that actually the earth is a globe well there we have it everyone this flat earther is basically saying before the trip actually happened remember that the cia were going to fake the whole thing and now we've had the trip and realized how ridiculous that theory is what did this flat earther do yes he came up with even more excuses dear oh dear oh dear oh dear well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday all wrapped up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below as I say we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button as well. It'd be very much appreciated. Tomorrow is another Saturday session where I'm actually going to discuss how the final experiment will be remembered. See you then.